I feel like it was more used as an adjective to describe things like, oh, that's a super Y2K outfit or a Y2K playlist. Uh, and then I came across this crazy instructional survival guide. Was that the Leonard, the Leonard Nimoy one? Have you seen that? I don't know. No, it wasn't. the. Is that a thing? There's a Leonard Nimoy Y2K survival guide. And we're going to cut to it now. I think a good place to begin is for Kyle and Evan. What are your memories of the Y2K phenomenon? I feel like a lot of people had the experience that it was just incredibly disappointing and like a massive letdown, but it felt like something really intense and potentially awful was going to happen. Yeah, I remember the buildup for sure. And I think I, we were a little bit younger than the, the characters in the movie, so I think that was the last year I stayed home before I like started going out to... Yeah, I for sure watched parties. the uh, MTV the New Year's special with my my, my friend Mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no no love for Mark. <laughs> we love Mark. Mark is tight. Mark is tight. Mark's All right. great. We love Mark. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of anticipation and it just kind of fizzled out. What did y'all know about Y2K growing up, or did you know much at all when, before the script came along? I feel like it had mostly been used to describe a certain aesthetic for like clothing, music, era of films, uh, era of time. But um, I had come across a survival video that was like a VHS tape that was like processed and put onto YouTube. And it was just the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen. And then that kind of sent me down a rabbit hole with like the videos of Bill Clinton talking about what was going to happen. And it wasn't something that like my parents had talked about or my, you know, nobody had really briefed me on it, but I feel like it was more used as an adjective to describe things like, oh, that's a super Y2K outfit or a Y2K playlist. Uh, And then I came across this crazy instructional survival guide. Was that the Leonard, the Leonard Nimoy one? Have you seen that? I don't know. No, it wasn't. the. Is that a thing? There's a Leonard Nimoy Y2K survival guide. And we're going to cut to it now. There are no Y2K experts. No one knows exactly what, if anything, will happen. And our individual and collective response to Y2K is actually far more important than Y2K itself. What are your memories of Y2K? Yeah, what do you or remember? did you know about it before the script came along? <laughs> what did you remember about Y2K? Do you remember being outside? Uh, I remember being negative one years old. Wow. Unfortunately. Um, I actually did know a lot about it. My uh, my dad kind of briefed me on it before I went because he wanted to make sure that I knew exactly how scared people genuinely were that the world was going to end mm. before mm. I went in and did this because he was like, no, this was, this was real. <laughs> people were genuinely sure that the world was going to end. And so now I get to... Um, use that to my advantage and we get to really freak people out all over again. <laughs> That's right. It def- the concept definitely hits close to home because the only relic of my 90s experience, I was four, um, was my Game Boy Color playing Pokemon Red. And if that came alive and killed me, I feel like uh, I wouldn't emotion- At least it would be like close to home. Yeah. You know, I spent multiple hours without friends playing that and it f- is the thing that did me in. That's pretty poetic, maybe. No? No, I think so. Well, come on, Daniel. No, what are you doing in 1999? Yeah. Someone save me. Jesus. No, you're doing great. I, uh, <laughs> you're doing great. I guess I, I just remember movies from that era. I never really thought about Y2K as a serious threat that people were worried about. I really I didn't. But I, yeah. I mean, I do now. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We all got a good education on it. Naturally. Could you tell us a little bit about your characters and what the dynamics are in this movie? Take it away, Jada. Nice. Um, we're just <laughs> two BFFs who have uh, absolutely nothing to do on New Year's Eve, and they get pumped up and decide to go to the popular party. But they're 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 two very codependent. Um, you know, when you have very specific humor, it doesn't really work around anybody else. I think we've all had those friends. Uh, you kind of speak your own language, and um, you're more like brothers. And Danny starts. His character starts get, becoming more comfortable in his own skin, and for some reason, Eli starts to resent that rather than learn from it. The film kind of, I guess, starts on just one of their normal days. Like they're just pissing around, basically, and just having fun and playing video games and like um, 
watching kind of almost kind of like porn in a funny way together but it's like you watch and it's like it's weird but it's just like they're, they're boys I guess you know like and you kind of meet them and as soon as you meet them they start like doing this weird handshake and speaking say these weird words and it's kind of like it's it's fun and it's kind of it's really wholesome so yeah they're kind of just um they like psych themselves up to go to this party and they're like Ugh. Well, was it reminiscent for y'all going through the whole 2012 thing where people thought again the world was going to end? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I did not draw that correlation, but yeah, I guess people were just looking for something to be afraid of. Cause I was going to say, the world's kind of always in, in a state of ending. Instant peril, yeah. like yeah. constantly, it's the next thing. Do you guys, do you guys remember 2012? Because Y2K, I was too young. Do you remember 2012? With the Mayan well, calendar and people thought because it ended. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. and then people realized geometrically circles have to end at some point. Right, like, right. it just doesn't. I don't remember much. Okay. Period. Yeah, people were really freaked the out. The fact that I remember lines is incredible. So Actually, <laughs> though, fun fact, I'm so sorry. I'm just, uh, it, it, technically there was a solar flare that was meant to hit Earth on in 2012 that we just happened to cosmically be misplaced for and it missed us. But it would have created an EMP blast that it's not very comfy for the human race. The Mayans knew all along. <laughs> Rachel, I'm curious if you thought about the 2012 phenomenon we all heard about. Yeah, I feel like that was our, like, that was, I don't know if I can speak for the two of you, but that was like our version of, of Y2K, because I was, oh, I will. Uh, that was, that I was 11 when that took place, and I was uh, on a camping trip with the Girl Scouts. And everybody was crying at, like, I don't know, it was such a weird moment but I mean it's one of those mass hysteria moments where it kind of catches fire with everybody and and they start making up other stories about what they think is going to happen until that like snowballs into something crazy and uh and then nothing happened and it's just like just like Y2K I was yeah it's sort of the opposite of COVID-19 we all I feel yeah. like so many people thought that was going to be nothing and then and then it was turned into one of the worst things to happen to us but yeah what were we talking about <laughs> why do you why do you think we people until look forward so much to a disaster or the end of the world? Why do they look forward to it? I, I would say it's probably a, a species wide collective death drive. In stories, it's like it's a form of escapism, and it's something that like you don't want to live through in real life, so you can kind of get a fix on it, you know, in a, in a story, and you can get the thrill of it, but then also the safety of, of it not being real. Is this to you a throwback to the type of movies teenagers grew up loving in the late 90s, early 2000s? We definitely drew a lot from the movies of the era and we wanted the film to feel like a pretty classic coming of age teen movie. So certainly we were talking and about and watching things like Can't Hardly Wait, 10 Things I Hate About You, She's All That, um, amongst a bunch of others. And then, you know, the movie hits another level and then there were a whole another barrage of sort of flicks that sort of served as inspiration. Do you feel like you're at the vanguard of like late 90s nostalgia? I always feel like I'm at the vanguard of, <laughs> of everything. <laughs> of all things, of the zeitgeist. So the 90s were a long time ago. Was it fun diving into the music and the movies and just immersing y'all yourselves in that culture? So I've always kind of been immersed in it, which was a really fun part of this for me because I got the script and I didn't really know who in the movie I was going out for. <laughs> I just got the script and I immediately thought to myself, it, it has to be this character and it was Ash because our... I already I unironically listened to Limp Bizkit mm. and all of these bands that I had to learn about for this and then turns out I already knew a lot about it and so it was very vindicating for me to finally be like I can use this useless knowledge on something but I already really really enjoyed it so then to jump in head first and be able to just geek out about it and and bring it to a new generation has been has been really really cool my character is like a hip-hop guy so I listen to a lot of hip-hop music that I wasn't familiar with it wasn't like the whole array of like what the 90s were about so I just focused on that, you know. You know, you nailed it. There's a sequence that we won't spoil that really pays it forward. Appreciate your, it. your studying paid off. Mm. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. They made us, um, I don't, I don't, uh, they made me uh, a mixtape 
they gave you me got a mixtape. They yeah, I don't know who it was, if it was Kyle and Evan or who, but I I got there and they handed me like an Ashes rap rock wow. CD mix. Kyle and just they were just like, here stomach. you go, and I still he just punched me in the stomach. Well, that too. He like put, and then handed oh, and then gave me that. But it was song. it was really, and so you could just tell how much they really cared about immersing us in the experience that I still have this little CD wow. mixtape with the sharpie on it of of Ashes Y2K That's rap rap rock mix. And That's I'll, It'll be worth a lot of money someday, right, but exactly. I ain't never gonna sell it. When you sell it, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Limp Biscuit, hearing those words again is like a punch in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, dude, dude, Fred Durst, also very sweet guy. We love Fred Durst. I feel like yeah, he's genuinely he's he's apparently a very cool guy. Cause I've had people be like, you know, you have to talk a lot about Limp Biscuit. Like, do you really like Limp Biscuit? And I'm like, I genuinely think, That's yeah, they're cool. So I, I I'm very proud to to bring people onto naturally. the Limp Biscuit train and start being like, yeah, '90s music is great. Like, all those guys are awesome. Exactly. Yeah. What was fun about diving into the late '90s and going into that nostalgic world? It was cool. It was kind of like there was this one day where me and Jaden. Uh, it was like me, Jaden, Carl, and Evan, and we just like went outside and we like took photos because we needed like photos of us as friends, and like we were dressed in like these clothes, and they were like, do this, do that, do that, and then even like uh, while we were shooting, it was just it was just like th I think the party scene as well, and you see everyone dressed up, and you see all these different cliques, and um, you know we we never know what it's like because we weren't there, but it was kind of like this. It was really special because we kind of like walked onto set and we were kind of in this thing that they had made and it was like really niche and there was things that we didn't get but it was like just cool to be a part of it and uh, listening to a lot of music yeah a lot of music yeah the style too um our favorite favorite thing to do was that we did maybe too much of was like putting modern things into the like Doing like the whip and the nay nay, yeah. and <laughs> doing inappropriate, yeah. and doing and then being ruining like, ruining takes. Yeah. yeah, we were like, did they say that back then? And they'd be like, no. no. So, it, so don't, don't actually it, say that. The answer doing would always be no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. But doing this movie kind of tapped me back into our culture. I feel like our yeah, our generation yeah. we were made me appreciate it maybe a little bit more. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. Do y'all think you're going to help bring Y2K passion back? Oh, it's it's well, I think the train the train's been going for a while. Yeah, we might be I too feel. late, actually. Yeah, yeah we yeah. may have missed it. The role of Maria is not an easy one to step into. So I am curious: Are there any other iconic musical theater roles you would love to do on stage or screen? I want to be Sally Bowles in Cabaret so bad. I mean, it's one of my favorite film performances. Obviously, like Liza Minnelli crushes it, but also Natasha Richardson kind of. May she rest in peace. Has this like iconic performance in the Sam Mendes staging of the the musical, uh, and we have the musical The Revival's coming to Broadway uh, with new staging and with with Eddie Redmayne as MC. And I saw it out in London. It's fantastic. But I do dream of getting to play that role someday on down stage the line. or screen. I mean, either thing. I I don't know if if anyone would ever want to touch you know Bob Fosse's Cabaret. It's a it's a wonderful film. Um, and I, I just, I would do it in any, they, a community theater could reach out to me and say, do you want to be said? I'd say yes. There's a saying around here, keep Austin weird. Do you think that this movie is perfect for this town then? Yeah, yeah, it is perfect for this. I mean, I'm excited for the screening because I think it's the perfect movie there for this go. place. It's kind of the most South by movie ever. We walked away from it and we were like, this is, this is perfect. Like, there's no better place for this to be than South by. It's, it's really going to be great, yeah.